Hello people, I'm DScorpion. I was originally going to plan on releasing a video discussing Wizards of the Coast and their various controversies over the past year, but very recently this article came out from Warhammer announcing that the old world is now, essentially it's just going to be coming out for pre-order this coming weekend. And oh boy, do I have a lot of thoughts on the old world that have been brewing and I kind of want to share my thoughts on. Mostly in just my general fears and worries of it. Now before we get into that, I think it should be important to recap the whole entire story and events of Warhammer Fantasy in general. To go back to the beginning, Games Workshop was set up around the mid-70s, pretty much used just to sell models for things like Dungeons and Dragons. Shortly afterwards, they would get their hands on a game known as Reaper, which is like the whole granddaddy of Warhammer. And then from there, some rules changes, some twists, would eventually then come to be the first edition of Warhammer, and then from there on it would evolve and change from its various models, its lore, its overall design and feel, to what would be recognizable, what you kind of would imagine it now today. However, after a while, the popularity of fantasy just dipped, and Games Workshop, not really knowing what else to do, just decided to give it a send-off to make way for a newer product of theirs. So roughly around late 2014 through mid or early mid 2015, the end times happened, which basically recorded the events of the last few days of the old world, and it effectively blew up. <laughs> Thus ending Warhammer Fantasy and making way for Age of Sigmar, which some of the fan base did not take well and in a major act of retardation decided to throw a massive childish hissy fit and burn their own armies. Now one does have to ask the question, why was Fantasy essentially killed off in the first place? Well, based on some videos I've been looking up and researching a bit to kind of understand this, there are a few common themes that I have gathered. The biggest thing that is brought up is that the game simply was not selling. Copyright is also a vast, huge problem because when you stop and think about it, Warhammer just was spawned from a lot of token-esque stuff. So nothing really was original and thus they couldn't really have any sort of copyright or control over their property. There also seemed to be a lot of various gatekeeping in various forms for newer players to try and jump in. One such thing was that fantasy was generally probably considered a bit of a competitive game. Not that any other game out there has its competitive moments, but it's more or less in the sense of like, maybe similar to War Machine, where it's very much designed with a competitive state of mind. And thus, if you're not really trying to play the game competitively, you're playing it wrong, or it's just very hard to play in general. In addition, there's also just a bit of a steep learning curve with stuff like rank and flank formations, pin wheeling, and all other sorts of rules. Rules in general were also pretty large, complex, a bit convoluted, and maybe more towards 8th edition were pretty poorly written. And better yet, it was also a very expensive game, where in 8th edition it really pushed more of this horde tactic. So a regular unit now would maybe require like 40, 50, maybe even 80 models, and trying to buy all that just for a single unit got pretty damn expensive. The last more major detail that I think to note is just the world couldn't really expand. The lore became stagnant, and there wasn't really a way for Games Workshop to like try to add more interesting units to factions, which I'm kind of mixed on this because they themselves are the ones that control the lore, and it, I guarantee it's not the first time that they have gone back and like retcon stuff, like Altharian I think is one such example. This could also just be down to a more of a problem of like having a such a set world in place, which granted it has its own little benefits. Like if you know a location and you say an army has pushed towards near that location, it actually gives weight to, you know, the world and the story as opposed to say like 40k or even AOS. But at the same time, during that event, everything then just goes back to normal, so it didn't really matter in the first place. And in terms of stories, the end times themselves, the major send-off for this series, relatively is seemed to have been 
rushed. It really only just took place over the course of roughly a year, which it, it almost doesn't feel like it was given enough time to like really like flesh things out and give a proper send off to everyone's favorite characters and factions and whatnot. And let's be fair, again, this is like the ending of 30 plus years of story and investment that players may have put into the setting. And now all of that is just gone so I, I i do understand like a lot of the frustration that came from this but that was that you know fantasy was gone age of sigmar launched it was very rocky but a couple of years have gone by now we're on third edition if you've seen most of my content you know i love aos and honestly i think it's only getting better at this point but now that raises another question, how did the old world suddenly start coming to pop back into existence? Well, I think the biggest uh, factor to this is when Total War came out with Total War Warhammer, or as I like to say, Total Warhammer, where it was just the perfect amalgamation of a previous rank and flank tabletop game into a video game format. It, this was also like, better yet, uh, putting it more into the public eye. So another issue that I probably should mention. So now, since you have this video game being pushed more towards a mainstream audience, and they're kind of getting a grasp of it, they're kind of learning about the lore, they're, you know, really getting into it, all of a sudden now, Games Workshop realizes that maybe fantasy still could have been saved, or at the very least, they can start working to bring it back, so then they can make, you know, more money, because it's it's Games Workshop. They, they always need more money. So in November of 2019, they released a quick teaser and announced that Warhammer Fantasy would be coming back as Warhammer The Old World. Though they also specified that would be a few years out. But hey, it's, it's only been four. But before we got to this point, we then eventually got a lot of community articles, kind of very occasionally bringing up details. We got confirmation on two of the main factions that would be essentially launching with it, Britonia and the Tomb Kings. I think mostly because they were the two factions that got fully squatted out from Age of Sigmar, so it just made perfect sense. The last quarter of 2023 basically was just constantly going over the various rules and how the phases work and really was just getting you hyped up and now we're at the point where it's almost in your hands and yet i still feel like there are a lot of concerns i have for the old world just just in general if we're really trying to stop and look at this i feel like just right now while games workshop is bringing it back i also feel like they're kind of playing it safe for the most part they're really only focusing on like the old world itself, so you're very limited in some of the factions that you play. But even if it was focusing on like the whole main world, like how does say like a faction like Lizardmen would then work? Because all, almost all of their models are now like fully updated for AOS, so like how, how do you make that work in general? By playing it safe, I, they just also bring back a lot of the old sculpts, which, you know, has a bit of nostalgia factor, but I think if you're trying to bring in a newer audience, you can very then just see the difference in age between, like, the brand new sculpts versus, like, a lot of the very clear old ones. And in comparison to, like, more of the name brand of AOS, it's just, it's a stark difference, and it, it's just better for Games Workshop to do that than, like, devote more resources into, like, a full relaunch. Something that we've kind of seen similar with, say, like, Eldar and 40k. That alone, then, also then comes back around to, like, the whole, like, copyright issue, which is what they worried about. So, and again, now, if you're also just looking at these old models, what's stopping you from, say, like, proxying or 3D printing your own sculpts at this point, since nothing's really copywritten? And why would they even, like, want to pay for the original models when, if I'm looking at some of these, like, leaked price scenes, it's just the same Games Workshop model where it's like, oh, $80 for a unit, like, that's, like, that's just a huge price investment. And I also get more like this is going to become much more of like, say, a specialist game similar to Horus Heresy, where who knows how much more support it will have. Like, it will have a fan base, but it won't be the main focus. And it's just overall, I feel like, going to be a bit more expensive than if just you were going to play, like, mainstream. There's also a question on, say, like, the player base. I know in my last previews video, I brought up just, like, there's still this scub animosity between fantasy fans and aos which despite fantasy now being back it's just like they still can't bury the hatchet i'm just thinking like 
is this still really going to go on? What if an AOS fan wants to come over? What if they get scared off because of, like, this elitism? Will the game in general kind of fall back down into being, like, this competitive-only mindset? How do you work with a prequel setting and, like, move forward with it from this point on? And better yet, how do you even stop and think about, like, some of the other competition that might have filled the void in for some people after fantasy was gone there's kings of war which is just fantasy but faster paced and more streamlined there's a song of ice and fire a game that is really like rules friendly and honestly a a game that i still need to review and there's also say like conquest where there's i think overall it's a more interesting system i think there's just more interesting mechanics going on with it. I love more the activation by activation system. There are just more systems out there that you can play that also not only are more cost of, that, that in just general are more cost effective than trying to get into this just due to like models generally being cheaper, the rules also generally being free like actually free and not just like a whole bait and switch for like 40k 10th edition did i think just to kind of wrap th th my thoughts up are that as much as i want the old world to actually succeed and you know give the old player base what it wants i'm not really sure it can do its job one of the designers of the bone dragon just was not feeling like it fit in with the lore so you have just con so i feel like there's just a little bit of like conflict going on behind the scenes of just like how the it's the whole entire game is going to be designed going forward that really is banking on nostalgia for the older players it's trying to make it new and flashy for the newer players but if you look at the little preview video of just like the overall gameplay it's just the same formula we've seen over and over for quite some time now It'll definitely be different, but I guarantee you it's going to have the same pitfalls as, say, like AOS and 40K have and just any other Games Workshop product. That's not to say I don't want this to succeed. I'm definitely going to be picking up, like, maybe both starter boxes just because, you know, some of the models I do find entertaining, especially a lot of the new Bretonian range. But I'm not really holding out, like, high hopes that it's going to, like, be super successful that everyone wants it to be unfortunately anyways i think that's just all the thoughts i have at the moment if i want to keep this video short so uh let me know what you guys think uh leave your comments down below on just what your thoughts on the old world are uh, any hopes or any worries you know give this video a like maybe share it around it really helps me a lot subscribe for more and i will see you in the next video